again Taurus and welcome to another episode of In All Things. Today I'm going to be speaking to a fellow Catholic youth about a topic ever so relevant in the hearts of young people today, singleness. For this conversation I've invited my friend Audrey Merlebe from Montreal, Canada to come speak with us and I'm really excited to hear what she has to say as I know Audrey's been on quite a full circle journey when it comes to her faith and has seen God work his best while she's been single. Today, Audrey is a youth in the Folklore movement, a graduate of Law and Society, and even has a blog page dedicated to sharing all the beautiful ways that God has worked and moved in her life. And so without further ado, let's go. So Audrey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> It's great to see you again. Uh, I'm very excited to speak today about singleness. Uh, How do you feel? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm excited too. (laughs) That's good. It's quite a topic. Mm -hmm. Um, It is. So, uh, you know, Audrey, the world uh, and many people just see singleness as something terrible, something that they need to get over, something that needs to be changed really fast. but we're here to talk about singleness in a brand new way, you know, in a more positive light, in the light of God. And so uh, I really am interested to hear what you have to say, as I know that you've been on quite a full circle journey with singleness, with your faith life. Uh, but to start us off, can you tell us about what your past life, uh, you know, romantically looked like, um, what you were up to, what you were doing, and, and just like who you were a couple of years ago? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, in the past, a couple of years ago, uh, I've been single for two years now. And before that, my, let's say, romantic life was pretty, um, a little bit all over the place. <laughs> uh, and my walk with, uh, with, uh, with God was not very, I wasn't really walking with God at that time. And um, so I was always getting myself into, uh, let's say, Uh, toxic relationships Um, and when I was not in a relationship I was always talking to a guy at some point I was never truly let's say even though I wasn't in a relationship I was always had a guy's attention you know and so it wasn't singleness as the way that I'm living singleness right now was it like a state of, of really as you said like jumping from uh you know a guy to guy not really you know following any sort of discernment and anything just kind of like going mm-hmm. oh. yes absolutely there was no discernment at all it was just uh oh he's interesting we would talk lose interest stop talking someone else stop, stop talking you know lose interest and then and so i was always so distracted but i didn't realize that was a distraction in my life. I really didn't until I, I really decided to become celibate and really um, be single uh, with intention, like um, intentionally. Um, that's when I realized all the free time I had, like all this time I was spending talking to, to someone. It just, I had all this free time to think, all this free time to um, to be with God and strengthen my relationship. I had all this time to become creative. I really, honestly, I discovered how creative I, I was. I didn't know I was, I had that many ideas. And then I started developing so many projects and also getting to know myself. And uh, yeah, and that's when I, I compared with the past and I realized, okay, it really was a distraction because I was wasting my time because these guys weren't sent from God. I wasn't trying to discern um, is this maybe uh, someone I could spend my life with? There was no, like, I didn't ask myself this question. How are you feeling? How are you doing spiritually at that time? Where was your faith at that time? And how was this this time of, of being uh, really uh, all over the place romantically uh, faring for you? Um, so at that time, spiritually, I was I was so distracted with men that spiritually it was like, almost non-existent and the same way that romantically was all over the place spiritually it was let's say all over the place in a way as well um it's like because i was um i had my attention on a guy i couldn't have my attention on a guy and also on christ it was like one of the other and because i 
I was distracted. I couldn't, I wasn't even thinking about, I was honestly, it was not really, a, <laughs> it was non-existent. And it's after a bad breakup, I was so tired of, of doing things my own way because it never worked. Like I was so sad, I was miserable. And I remember I was so miserable that I, I decided, you know what, Audrey, why don't you try to do things God's way? Because I would let God do things in my life, but romantically, I never even thought about, well, why not do it the way God would want you to do it? And so that's when I made the decision two years ago. I was like, okay, like it can't, what God wants for me cannot bring me, um, I cannot be more miserable than I am right now. So I have nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> that's when I really decided after that breakup, I was like, okay, you know what? You're going to do relationships the way that God wants you to do them. Because you, you, you hit like the worst. So that was the beginning of me becoming um, intentionally single. I see. And, and just to take me back to that moment, um, that must have been such a big moment. And in a lot of ways, you know, deciding to say no and leave that uh, life behind that was successful mm -hmm. by all means in, in, yeah. you know, in the eyes of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. That has been very scary and really unprecedented for you. What was going through your mind when, when you know, you said that, okay, God, I'm going to leave that behind and really follow you? Mm -hmm. So when I decided that, um, I wasn't scared at that point because I was too, like, it was just too bad. The situation was so bad, I wasn't even scared because I knew it couldn't be worse. <laughs> and so, um, when, when you mean that, doing, when you say that, do you mean bad in in your soul? In, in yes, your... in my soul. Like I was broken. I was really. I was so sad. I was depressed. I was um, nothing. Nothing good, really. And so I made that decision. I slowly started to read the Bible, um, and that is how my walk with Christ began and my singleness, my intentional singleness as well. So what happened when I started reading the Bible, I realized I didn't know God. And that's how I, um, how can I say, I learned to know who he was by reading his word. And I also learned how much he loves me. And that's when I learned what love is. And I realized I didn't know what love was. And that's why all my relationships were so messy. And so it's like I needed to know what love is, what God wants for me, what relationship are supposed to be like um, according to his word in order for me to have this foundation so that uh, next time if I get into a relationship, then I know what it's supposed to look like. Because when you don't know what it really looks like, you kind of learn, you know, you let society teach you, teach you what love is, uh, maybe yes. your parents, uh, you know, what you've seen growing up, and that's not necessarily the truth which it's your truth so you just repeat it absolutely and what the world says that we need to be doing as young people as youth uh i would not advise for it as you can probably attest to as well <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. and the thing is mm -hmm. because it's the world and it's so normal to the world mm -hmm. you everyone just does it without um questioning it so we just you know we just follow and then I realized most, most of people, most of us who follow, you know, the world's way, we're not really happy. It's like, you're always looking for something and you just, oh, that's what I was doing. I was looking for something. I was, I didn't know what I was looking for. So I would just, I would just accept anything. And now that I know like what I needed was really uh, God in my life. But, you know, we tried to, to, how can I say, with relationships, with work, to fill our lives with things, because we're just looking for that true love. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I had to really um, learn that. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I heard that uh, the ways of the world, and I'm sure it comes, it's the same when it comes to, uh, you know, being in, in relationships, being single or whatever state we're in, uh, that the ways of the world are very much like salt water that uh, you drink salt water but really it just ends up like harming you more and making you more thirsty uh, yeah. just to, like a point that it never ends and, and you just can't do it anymore um, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's really interesting to hear like like your very real testimony kind of like affirming mm -hmm. that too um yeah so I find that very fascinating. Now, when it comes to the two years, I, I believe you mentioned two years uh, yes. that you 
single. Um, yeah. What kind of breakthroughs, spiritual breakthroughs or growth have you seen in your faith that just weren't possible when you were in relationships? Um, so in these two years, I've seen like a lot of breakthroughs. So if I go back when I had that breakup, I decided, okay, God, get into my relationships and my life romantically, started reading the Bible. Uh, first breakthrough was really um, learning what love is. It blew my mind because I was like, wow, the, finally seeing what true love is and how much God loves me, I was just mind blown. And also um, another breakthrough was knowing God. I realized I didn't know God. I knew about God, but I didn't know really who he was. And that's something you really need to, you can just go to church on Sunday to know that you really need to read the Bible to uh, to have God speak through you, uh, to that's you big. through his word. That's really mm -hmm. big. Yeah, it really, that's, that's kind of how my conversion happened in a way. It was through the Bible. At first, I remember I would read um, the Bible and sometimes I didn't understand everything, you know, but I just kept reading it even though I didn't understand because I was like, I was like God, talk to me. <laughs> and the more I read it, the more I understood and the more that's how God spoke to me through, uh, through his word. And uh, so that was the beginning, the first few months um, of the beginning of my transformation. And uh, so, and then I had the opportunity to go to uh, World Youth Day in Panama in January. And um, I remember we had a, like um, a mass and then it was for the pilgrims, you know, before going away. And I remember uh, I prayed and I asked God to change my heart. And I, I knew God wanted to, me to, to make this, you know, to do this prayer, but I was scared because I knew that if I asked that, he would do it. And I was kind of scared that um, the things that I loved, I wouldn't love them anymore. I would have to make too many mm. changes. Like I knew it would be real. I knew if I would say, God change my heart so that it, yeah. it, re it reflects what you want for me, he would do it. And I did that prayer. And honestly, since that moment, I started changing like the things that I was interested in, the kind of guys that I was interested in, it all it started changing. It wasn't overnight, but it was slowly, slowly, gradually. And so since these two years, that has been um, a change that has happened. And um, what else happened? I became so creative, as I said earlier. Um, I started having, so it's like my mind was so, it's crazy how my mind was so distracted with other things. Mm -hmm. Right now, I just, when you don't have someone else to think about, you, I mean, you can think about yourself, but then, you know, that's, <laughs> you can only think about yourself for, for a while. Then you're like, oh, what could I do? Uh, what can I do? You, can, you also think about what can I do? What's my purpose? Yes. That's the major thing. I, I finally kind of found what my purpose was. Um, and when you, and before that, I realized I was living without a purpose. That's why it was so like messy. I was like just going through life by like trial and error. I wasn't really asking myself, oh, why am I on this earth and stuff. And by knowing God, I, I was able to know what my purpose is. Once you know that, it's like everything you do is motivated by that. Wow, that is huge. To discover your purpose in singleness, that is, that is so big and amazing. Um, you did mention that, uh, you know, being single uh, the distraction, like the noise around you just kind of like stopped and you were able to focus on yourself. Um, I, I have found that actually in, in my life too, uh, you know, being in a relationship versus being single, that being single, it's really just like you and God, you know, mm -hmm, exactly. you wake up and it's like, boom, you and God, you go to bed, boom, you and God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and that's very, it almost feels like it really is like outside, it pushes you outside of your spiritual comfort zone, you know, your faith yes. comfort zone. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I can, I can see, I can see how that really worked for you and, and how that was mm -hmm. incredibly transformative for you. Um, there's also this one Bible passage, which you might have heard before, but I like, I have to bring it out at this point, because I feel yeah. like you're an example of it too. Um, it's Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, um, uh, 723. Okay. Let me, let me pull out the Bible passage. Cause I don't want to yeah. mess this up <laughs> <laughs> for anyone. I don't want to be ruining scripture at any point. <laughs> so first Corinthians chapter seven, verse 34, 
An unmarried woman is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. What do you, what do you think about that one? I think it's it's true. It's really true. And because I f if you're not married, that is like your your time of singleness. You know, there's a season for everything, and that time you cannot. How can I say you cannot skip it because that is going to form you and um, that is how you will with God you, you it's your time to um, he's going to build your character um, and then once if you get married then you can come into that relationship um, with how can I say with God within yourself you know what I mean and I think we were talking about that um, the other day and I was saying that um, if you have to to have this strong relationship with God first before you get into a relationship, mm -hmm. because if you don't, well, for me, if you don't, it's like that relationship is going to become your your idol. You know, that person's going to become your God in a way. Yes. Because you didn't have that foundation, like you weren't anchored in Christ first. And I remember in the past when I would get into relationships, I would just give everything. Like I was just and I would forget all about myself. It would all be about the, that person I'm dating. And, and I feel like God knew how I was in relationships. And that's why he needed, I think that's why that last relationship, I think that's why he needed me to have like a heart, my heart broken completely. So he could like use that as a way to come to me. Because that was, that was like my main distraction then. Absolutely. And there's the idea that singleness, as you mentioned, and as you've kind of been hinting at too, is the vocation before the vocation. You know, it's so important to get right before you move on to something as big as marriage or even the priesthood or, you know, becoming a nun or anything, really. It's uh, really the thing that you have to get right. Um, I remember when I started my... Uh you know, my singleness, like when I decided I'm going to be celibate, it was mostly, I was like, <laughs> I was uh, motivated by the idea that like, in order to get right with myself so that when I find, I find the one I'm ready for that person, at mm -hmm. first that was my reason. And then the more time went by, the more I focused on God and I focused on his purpose for me. And then it kind of changed. Like I still want to find the one, but I don't think about it really. I think more about what can I do to make, uh, to reflect Christ in my life and to really mm -hmm. accomplish his purpose. And I really, it, it, it was a shift. Like um, I realized that um, of course, like for myself, I have the desire to, to get married and have kids. But mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm really happy with, my singleness and with like I'm kind of excited even though I don't know what's going to happen I know that there's so much that God's going to keep doing in my life and um so that's where I'm at right now with my singleness mm -hmm. and as you mentioned singleness that's not to find a husband necessarily but or, mm -hmm. or a partner but singleness to to like serve and be with God first and foremost yeah. For any youth that's like, what do I do with my singleness? What do I do? What do I do now? Like I'm single or I've been single for mm -hmm. a while. What should I do? What, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say, well, first don't panic. You don't have to find something right now. And you have, being single, you have the time to try out things, you know? But I think the best way it would be to pray and ask God, what do you want me to do? And also look at your, the talents that God has given you, the gifts he has given you. And uh, start there and, you know, share that and try to uh, go in that and serve God through your gifts and your talents. And um, for example, for myself, what I did was I love to write. And um, with my walk with Christ, I just decided what one thing I find very important is testimonies and sharing your story because it can be a way for someone else's salvation. It can be a way for someone else to Yes. To know Christ, you know? And I felt like, I just felt like God loved me so much. I was like, okay, I need other people to feel the same way. 
And so I uh, created um, my Grace Advantage, which is a, an Instagram page where I share testimonies of how God um, changed my life and changes it, you know, daily. And, um, and so I write a lot. And that was a way for me to use a gift that God gave me to share it with the world. And also it was a way to be creative. Mm -hmm. And that was actually something that I wanted to uh, bring up too previously. Uh, the blog page, the beautiful blog page that you have where you share your testimony and you share how God has blessed you. Uh, it's so, it, yeah, it, it's so beautiful. And um, you. I think it's an example of just something that would have absolutely not been possible uh, not being single. No, no, I, was, I, would, <laughs> I would be too distracted knowing myself. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and For also sure. like you have the time to reflect mm -hmm. and it's like god can't can't really do anything in your life if you don't make the room for him to be in your life and mm -hmm. so that wouldn't i didn't wouldn't ha have happened mm -hmm. and some beautiful uh I, I would say some beautiful graces have come out of your blog page as well uh you know just some people reaching out to you or some people expressing that they were moved by what you posted i don't know if you yeah. have any stories to share Yes, I'm always so um, like surprised by people uh, sending me private messages uh, and telling me, oh, I really like what you're doing. I remember one post where I had the most uh, reaction was a post that I did about celibacy and waiting to have sex till marriage. And, you know, I had a lot of comments on my page, but I had a lot of private messages from people who were like, didn't necessarily want to share with you know, on the comments, because everyone sees it, but they came to me, they were like, oh, thank you for this, and strangers, you know, like, it's, it's so special, like, especially because with social media, it's strangers, that's what, and they're, they're so touched, and I'm like, wow, I, because to me, it's just me writing my thoughts, and also what God tells me, you know, and just, just posting it, to me, it's very simple, and mm -hmm. I always try to, I screenshot shotted some like messages just to remind me like don't stop even if you don't feel oh, like wow. it you really need to you don't know who it's going to bless even if you feel like uh it's nothing i'm not i cannot judge that it won't go to someone's heart and you know you never know so just that's why it's so important to to share just share mm -hmm. And and look at that, you know, God like inspired you in your singleness and it's just like yeah. becoming fruitful and multiplying and multiplying. Mm. Yeah. There. Yeah, wow. absolutely. One thing too that uh, I want to ask as well um, is that, you know, we talk about singleness in, in a joyful way, in just a very, uh, you know, like filled with God's grace and happy way. Yeah. But does that mean that there isn't some sort of pain in singleness, some sort of suffering? Yeah, yeah, there is, there is, <laughs> <laughs> there is, because, um, like what I said, it's really learning patience, um, and being patient is difficult, <laughs> it's really difficult, because you don't know when, it's not like waiting for something when you know it's going to happen, you know, it's like, oh, okay, I just have like a couple of months, okay, but now it's like waiting without knowing when it's going to happen, that's really testing your faith and that is difficult and it's also because you're alone it's also battling like your thoughts uh, about yourself um, as I said this time of singleness God really uses it to work on your character and for God to work on your character and building it and strengthening it it takes you have to go through some pain you know and also, mm -hmm. um, I'm learning a lot of things, and uh, that's difficult. It's also, um, also with society, you know, everyone's always like, yes. oh, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Like, oh, how come you're still single? Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's also always, for me, what's difficult, it's constant discernment. Like, each time there's, yes. now, each time there's a guy that comes into my life, I always have, like, before anything, I always have to, like, okay, is this person going to be a distraction? And mm. I pray about it. Then I, I'm like, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, can I get like a third confirmation? <laughs> it's also always, it's like the, the, the work of letting go of what you know is not, who you know is not the one that's difficult as mm. well. 
Mm -hmm. It's also like um, discipline. Yeah, discipline is difficult because uh, you have yes. to really choose to wait for what's better instead of settling for what's like good enough, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have found that it's also a big, uh, you know, every day that you wake up, you have to say your yes. Like you have to give mm -hmm. to God, especially living in the world, you know, Mm -hmm. Some people are in university, you know, hanging out with friends or, you know, meeting people. I don't know. And, and it can get yeah. tough sometimes, but you have to, yeah. you know, it's a constant yes in every scenario. Uh, mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's also like battling temptation daily. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's a lot of like, I would say like mental work, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> focus on this, you know, always trying to like, no, okay on the right path <laughs> yeah yeah difficult yeah so at least at least you know if, if someone's watching and, and thinking that we mean to say this is like a fairy magic mm -hmm. rainbow mm -hmm. time of, of just easiness that they that they know that yes this is beautiful it's a fruitful time but it certainly still has its its moments and its struggles yeah, yeah. Um, and you really have to mm -hmm. before going into being intentionally single you really have mm -hmm. to have the right motivation if your motivation is wrong, you'll fail each time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so get into it with the right mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so is there anything that you would like to add? You know, if there's any young person watching that has been struggling with their singleness or is considering entering into singleness, is there anything that you would like to leave them with? Um, so if you're a word of encouragement, would be be patient with yourself it's it's not going to be easy but it's worth it and trust god in it if you're not trusting yourself at least trust god and trust that he will do amazing things in your life during this time and really um hang on you know and uh keep praying and find what the most helpful thing is find something in your singleness, find something that you're passionate about, um, where you can serve God through it. And um, also having like friends that are in the same, finding a community or some mm -hmm. people who are going through the same singleness stage is really good. Because if you're surrounded by like couples, it's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, be really it will not be easy. Yeah, no, it won't. And um, yeah. Give yourself patience. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so, Audrey, uh, this has been a wonderful talk. Thank you so yes. much for being on the Thank show. Thank you. Here and sharing your testimony, your story. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And God bless you, Audrey. I wish you all the best. God bless you. you in whatever too. state you're in and how long, yes. however long it lasts. <laughs> yes, amen. You too. Thanks. All right, everybody, that is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation with Audrey. I know that I sure did. If you'd like to rewatch this episode or check out other In All Things episodes, you can do that at saltandlighttv.org. And while you're online, why not find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Thanks again for joining me today. I can't wait to speak to my next Catholic youth. And until then, God bless.